Thanks for joining me today. Um, apart from a few flies, a, a nice day up in the Adelaide Hills. We just wanted to show you to demonstrate today the Filmac float valve rig kit, which is this, uh, this assembly structure here in the bag with full instructions. And also, more importantly, to tell you about Filmac's new style foot valve and non-return valve. We'll talk about the non-return valve a bit later, but this is the, this is the foot valve. Um, you'll notice a slightly different design. Basically, the, the story was that we were in a position that the tooling was getting quite old and our guys in product development simply took an opportunity to improve the design. So there is slightly improved flow rate over the old one. The seal mechanism in, inside is identical to the old one. So it's all the same features that people enjoyed from the old one. It's pretty much inside this, but just with a slightly new streamlined shape. So that's really all we've done. With the uh, foot valve float rig, the good news is it's been designed not just to take the old uh, non-return valve or foot valve in this case but also the new foot valve so I'll go through the kit and explain what's in there so if you buy a kit we can do we can do both so what's in the kit you ask well basically what it's got is the uh, structure here uh, this actually holds the the foot valve in place and we can tie a couple of floats to that it also suits both inch and a half and two inch foot valves and we have the uh, the adapters here to take either or uh, it comes with a string to attach the floats these little attachment pieces that are actually screw into the float. So I'll give you an example of one I did earlier. So you can see here the float, that just screws into the float so we can actually attach the string. So that makes it quite handy. And then because there, there are some subtle differences between these two non return or these two foot valves, I should say, there are a couple of little spaces there. So with the new style, this new streamlined style here, we actually need to use these couple of spaces. So what I'm going to do is just show you the best, what I think is the best way of doing it. Typically you are outside generally doing this. What I think is the easiest way really is to, in this case I'm doing a two inch, so grab that, the screws come with it. I'd be putting a screw in like that, fit the spacer, and then screw it into, your, uh, into this piece here, into a cross piece, and just get that started like that. And then I'd suggest you there turn it round and just fit the other side. And this just makes it easier, otherwise it has a habit of being all fingers and thumbs, and I'm no different to anyone else. It's just easier to get that out of the way, then we're not going to end up dropping something and, and uh, losing it and not being able to find it later. I've got plenty of movement in that. So just now a question of actually fitting the foot valve. You'll notice on the foot valve here a couple of ridges. So we're actually going to sit this between those two ridges, so that just holds it in place. So simply a question of, um, of sliding that through like that you see you can push it through so I've got that in place now just a question of tightening those up and as I said they hold in place around those those little ridges just make sure that they are nicely centralized like that so there we go that's pretty much got it in place okay so that's pretty much done what we're going to look at now is we'll, we'll go and uh, show you how to fit the floats and also of course what we need to do is put a, uh, a, um, an adapter on here which will enable us to get us to our two inch piece of rural poly. Okay. Next trick with this uh, float valve rig kit is to fit a mail end connector or adapter. You've probably seen me do it before, I'm a right hander so I hold it in my right hand and I'm going to, as you see, hold tension on this tape as I move it around. You see, I've got complete control over that. I can get my tape on. Look, as I've said many times before, perhaps six to eight turns. Look, again, for those who are unsure, a dry fit is always a good way of doing it, and then you're certain about how much you need. So that looks to be about right. So just a question of screwing those together. Again, just try and avoid cross-threading them. There we go. Got those together. And again, I've only got little hands, so I'm generally rely a bit more on a pair of um, uh, multi-grips to get it entirely done up but it's just a question of making sure that's done up reasonably tightly again sometimes I can make it look a bit awkward it's not the ideal position to be in some days but uh, not to worry so we'll get that uh, tight just to make sure we don't have any leaks uh, we don't want to be sucking air through there okay that's done up nicely now and again, you've seen me do this before, question of here's, here's the, uh, the suction line I'm using, in this case 2 inch rural. I've already pre-fitted the, um, uh, the insert in the nut, and you'll just remember, nuts always goes on first, followed by the split ring, you'll see the split ring there, and then we put the insert in. So if you're unsure about how to do that, there is an online video you can go and look at where, where I talk about how that's all done, so that's quite a good one to see if you're not sure. Again, we just hold it into position like that, 
I'm going to let the nut do all the work. So we just do the nut up and that will pull that insert in. So it's quite straightforward. So we'll just, you can, you can just feel that start to tighten up as it pulls it in and then it relaxes a bit as it pulls that into the compression chamber. So the O-ring inside is now sealing that off so that won't, uh, so that won't leak. Again, always recommend having done that, that we just, uh, again, just nip it up a little. So let me just get those a little further apart. Now you can use, in, in my case here, a pair of multi-grips. Uh, alternatively, if you want to, you can certainly use a Filmac tool. Just get that tightened up. Probably what I want to do there is is um, I'll get another pair of pliers on there just to make sure I do it nice and tightly. But that's that's quite straightforward. So having having done that, the next trick will be just to fit our floats, um, and uh, we'll get this uh, get this installed into our dam. Now, in terms of attaching the floats, we do provide this cord, and sometimes people comment perhaps the cord's not strong enough. It's a very very strong cord, and some people have a preference for things like stainless steel jack chain. This actually has better, better uh, strength than something like a stainless steel jack chain. You could, of course, use a welded link chain, which would give you ultimately bit better than this. But again, this works particularly well, so we've had no issues whatsoever. Now, most of you out there will be far more proficient at doing knots than I am, so I'll show you how to do a granny knot for those who don't know. But that's about as good as it, it gets. I didn't do, uh, didn't do scouts, I didn't go to girl guides, so that's the best I can manage. Probably the key thing though is just to try and get the lengths approximately the same. So as I said, you'll have a good laugh and I'll, probably I should do the same as anyone going to uh, something like YouTube and figure out how to do a knot properly. But you really do want to try and get them roughly the same length. So the, uh, you can see there that, that was uh, going through this, uh, I'll bring it back into focus, that was going through these, these adapters onto the float and then it's these outer holes on this rig that you're actually going to be using. So put it through those. What you will notice if you have a close look at the, the rig kit itself, you'll notice there are some additional holes and I'll point those out in just a moment. So what you'll see, perhaps a little difficult to see, but we have additional holes here and here and here and here. The reason they're there, we recommend you actually get some uh, another piece of rope and actually weigh this down, perhaps something like a house brick, maybe a couple or a piece of steel, whatever it might take. And what that doing is just ensuring that at no time this is going to actually lift towards the surface. We don't want this foot valve coming near the surface or we're going to potentially suck in air and that's going to damage our pump. We want that to sit below the surface. That's the whole idea behind it. So I won't show you how to do that. I think it's something you, you can do yourself, but we'll certainly get that done. And what we'll do now is we'll get that, we'll get that set up and then I'm going to go for a bit of a wander around the dam. And we're actually going to get it installed in the dam, start connecting it to our pump, and then I'll go on and talk a bit about our uh, non-return valves, which of course are basically just a foot valve without the cage. Okay, if you have a look now, I've managed to get the float valve rig kit. The whole thing is, is in the water. The floats are floating. I chose to use a house brick to give us a little bit of weight. The other thing you'll notice is the suction line. We've actually pre-filled it with water. Really important, a suction line going into a pump, and we're using a pump today, needs to be pre-filled with water, otherwise you'll cause potential damage or certainly will cause damage to your pump. So that's all done. So my next aim is to try and walk around the dam. Fingers crossed I won't fall in. Got myself some rope. So the aim is to tow this around the dam. I'm going to tie it off on the other side on a sapling over there, which means it won't move around. It'll stay in the deepest part of our dam. And then we'll hook it up to the pump and we'll go from there. So if you'll bear with me, I'll wander off around the dam. We'll use this sapling here. Key thing, of course, is to leave ourselves enough rope. I'm going to tie this off to make sure that as the dam level drops, it's critical, of course, that we make sure that there's enough rope there that it doesn't end up dropping to the bottom of the dam and then put undue stress on that suction line. Okay, we've now managed to get our float valve rig kit out there. You can see the floats are floating. We've got that lined up, the rope's tied off. We filled this, uh, this is filled with water, our suction line, really important, I mentioned earlier. We've got to make sure that's filled with water so we don't damage the pump. So we've used a rural fitting here, just a question of, again, bringing that up to our inlet on the pump and getting that tight. So we'll fill that, that'll go in. And then we'll just, um, as I mentioned, nip that up, just hold the body of the uh, female fitting so it doesn't move and just, Give that a couple of turns like that. That's now tightened up. So that's, that's worked really well. Um, if there's any concerns about the pipe being full of water, you'll notice on top of the pump there's a cap there. That cap can be removed just to make sure. In fact, we'll do that later. So we'll get some additional water. Just critical that that pump is full of water so we don't cause it any damage. So um, I'll go on in a moment and I'll just talk to you about what we're going to be doing on the outlet. Okay, well, we're almost there. What we're going to do though, we've got the inlet all set up. We're going to just do some work on the outlet so we can get, get this all happening. 
We've chosen to put a non-return valve, and a non-return valve is simply a foot valve without the cage. So the cage, uh, of course, is to keep debris out. On these new models, uh, it's the uh, end that's been screwed in. You can see that's actually the inlet, uh, and the uh, part of the body is actually on the outlet. On the old ones, a little bit trickier. We had two end caps. Always good to have a look. They are arrowed. So I'm just going to show you here if you can see that there is an arrow clearly indicating the direction the water goes. If you have a look underneath, you can actually see the piston. So I push my hand in there, water needs to move against that piston. So this goes in this way. While we're installing one, we're just we're going to be heading uphill from this pump, and it just means what it, it means is we're not going to have any water draining back down. Yes, acknowledge we've got a, a foot valve in there, but if we're doing any maintenance, it just stops that line from, from draining. So I've already pre-fitted this with some tape, as you would have noticed. Just a question of getting that on, and then um, and then just a question of, of, of tightening that up, and then we'll connect our rural poly, and we should be well and truly underway. So again, just get that so you can feel it tighten. You don't want to overdo it. We're going into a Filmac fitting, so that should tighten up quite well. So that's all done. I'll go and uh, put the mail-in connector in, and then we'll hook up these, uh, the rural poly, and uh, we'll, we'll get underway. Last piece of the puzzle now, we've put a mail-in connector into our non-return valve. Again, just a question of connecting up this piece of rural B-class. So uh, just get that started. You can feel it going to the compression chamber. It's going in. There we go. In we go. And again, nip it up. Make, just make sure we've got a nice watertight seal there with our thread tape, so we don't want that to move. So the best thing is just to hold that body, grab a set of multi-grips like that, and that is now tightened up. So that really, um, yeah, should be perfect for many years to come. Non-return valve, foot valve out in the dam with our float valve rig kit, so a nice setup, and off we go.